Time to generate our displacement map. For that, I'm just going to go to the utilities, texture baking, new operation. And you can give it a name. For the low mesh resolution, or sorry, the low resolution mesh, you pretty much pick what is the start point that you want to displace from, or that you want to calculate from. Uh, for this example, because I want to hold displacement, I'm going to start from level 0. And you will have the option for the subdivision. You have different options from none, good, high, and highest. Good is, is, good, is good enough, pretty much. Uh, but you can explore, and I will encourage you to explore and try different settings. Uh, this is the setting that I found works best for me. It uh, doesn't have to be the best for everybody, so please try. Sorry, for the high resolution mesh, pretty much check what is the highest level that you want to displace to. So now Mudbox will think what is the displacement from level 0 to level 6 and it will generate a uh, displacement map for you. Alright, uh, I don't need a normal map for this uh, session. However, in the advanced section here, if you're going to take the normal map to Maya, uh, take it as tangent. You will have less seams in Maya. Going back to the displacement, pretty much here, just locate where you want to save your file. For the size of the map, I'm more than happy with the 1024. You can have different types of formats. The search distance is uh, calculating or actually thinking how many units from the low mesh to the highest mesh, for the mud box to start looking for the low mesh to the highest mesh. Uh, by the way, all these uh, parameters are well documented on the forum, sorry, the mud box forum. So please go, uh, go there and uh, just have a quick look at it. It's really, really uh, helpful. Uh, the displacement, I want it to be 32 bit. So in the displacement format, I'm just going to change that to 32. If you scroll down, you will see there is a preset in the advanced section. You can flip it to Maya. And that will ensure that uh, our displacement map is going to be compatible with Maya. Once you're done, all you have to do is to hit start operation. Mudbox will start thinking for a bit. And uh, actually you can't see it right now, but it's uh, right below my uh, recording sc uh, screen. It's just thinking and it's saying creating balance tree and uh, it will give you the percentage. Once it's done you will get a, a finished uh, window and it will tell you for example how long it took and where did it save it. I'm just going to do the same exact thing but this time I'm going to start and instead of starting from the lowest level is 0, I'm going to start from level 4. So I'm jumping from one, le one level to the highest level. Uh, because I want to create a bump map actually. I'm going to be using that to emphasize on some of the, the details that we have. So same exact thing and we hit the start operation. Alright, so the bump map that I just created was 32-bit. I will create it one more time. This time I want it to be 8-bit and I will say normalize to search distance. I want to show you what's the difference between 8-bit and 32 once they finish. So uh, once this uh, finished the calculation, we will pick it up from there. One final thing I'm going to do in Mudbox is to export the lowest level one, book one more time back to Maya. So I'm just going to go down in the hierarchy in the uh, division level until I go to level 0. And I will export that back in Maya. But the reason is, most probably during my sculpt, I already moved some of the points around. So now these points don't match when I take it with the displacement map that was generated. So I want to make sure that they match as much as possible. So going back down to level 0, and go my to Selection Tool, Object, Select Object, and File, Export Selection, and we choose the OBJ format. One cool feature Mudbox have is the ability to check your displacement map after generating it. For that, I'm going to re-import my model, the one that I just finished working on. 
and here it is at level zero and we're going to do another operation called utility it was going to be under utility mesh displacement you can give it a name and now we have the ability to choose what are we trying to displace or to check the displacement on so we have our dyno here and what is the level that you want to displace to so if you notice here at level 0 it's uh, 10604 faces if we divided it to five levels or we go up to level 5 you will see that the face count jumps to 1 million point 6 which we had before we can go now and grab our displacement map Since it's a displacement map, you want to have this to alpha. And just all you have to do is just hit operation. Mudbox will think about it for a minute or two. And you will end up with a geometry that looks exactly like the geometry that you sculpted in the previous example. This looks the same. You will end up having this displacement as a layer, and you can modify it change it as much as you want. Not all image viewers can display a 32 map, uh, bitmap file. So if, uh, if I try to open my 32-bit uh, map, you will get this weird result. Photoshop CS2 can display it. If you want to look at it accurately, you can use the command prompt and just type in IMF underscore display or disp and you can just drag and drop it will be a little bit big uh, so it will fill up the screen but pretty much this is the displacement map the 32-bit map holds more information than a regular 8-bit uh, map so this is for example the 8-bit map looks like time to go to mine and we're gonna use the displacement map to render our final project. So here is our model since we left it last in Maya. And I'm going to import my OBJ, the head that we just finished in uh, Mudbox. And the, I'm opening the option box for the OBJ format and I just want to emphasize on the fact that uh, make sure that uh, create multiple objects is set on false because it's set on true by default. Just locate the file. Actually right on the gecko you can see they don't really match. So this is the original, that's the new one. When you export them from one package to the other, you want to make sure that the CV ID doesn't change. Sorry, the vertex ID doesn't change. What that means, each vertex, each one of these vertex that you will have, uh, actually I should have said vertices that you have in your mesh has a specific number. To view the vertex number, you can go to display, uh, polygon, custom polygon display. And let's pick both objects and turn on show item number vertices. Hit apply. And you might get overwhelmed with all these information that you'll receive. Just a quick check, pretty much what we're looking for. The same position of each vertex does have the same number. So for example here is 119, 119, the one up, 137, 137, and one the rear here is 893. So we see it's moved a little bit but still exists pretty much in the same space. And this can be really important when you exporting from one package to the other.